Well, collectors, uh, here we are again. Uh, what episode is this, Ob? 21. I, number 21, and today is uh, January the 14th. So we're going to do a uh, another unboxing. And uh, thank you so much for your support in the past. It uh, really is uh, great. Uh, I love all the, the comments, the good ones and the bad ones. So keep them coming. It's always enjoyable. And um, so we're going to start another episode. And um, before I before I get into it, I I thought I would tell you one of my little old stories, you guys. Some of you seem to like them. One guy wrote me that I I talk too much or say things he doesn't want to hear. So uh, I apologize for that if I offended him. But I thought most collectors like to hear about some of the things in the old days. So uh, this story is uh, is about my my great friend Lieutenant Colonel Thomas M. Johnson, uh, who you all know is is gone now. But um, we were. Uh, good buddies, um, partners in the Mac show, and um, uh, saw each other quite often for 40 years. It's a it's a long time to to know somebody, and uh, and he was a good friend, I'll tell you. But um, a lot of people, you know, Tom, because he was the colonel, uh, he was always kind of staunch and um, maybe sometime a, a little reserved and. Um, he kind of only told you something on a need-to-know basis. I guess that was his uh, army training. Mm. Yeah, that got me going. Mm. And a little sip, too, to finish this story or continue it. Uh, so, he was always kind of a guy I never... In, uh, in the 40 years, I think there's only one time that I ever saw him frizzled. Uh, you could have be working on the biggest deal in the world or the most horrible thing that ever happened, and he would just sit down and, well, let's think about this, Whitman, and uh, devise some kind of a solution or whatever. So he was always um, composed, and, uh, and uh, you guys may not know it, but Tom had a... Uh, he had a, a good eye for the ladies. Uh, he uh, he liked women very much, and as you know, he was um, he was married to Tink for many many years, his beloved wife. Uh, but he still turned his head around once in a while to to take a look, because uh, why not? And uh, I remember one time we were um, we were looking at a hotel for a, a possible site for the Mac show, and. Uh, uh, the hotel these days, hotels are, are run mostly by ladies, especially when you're getting into uh, uh, bookings for affairs and things like that. And uh, we met up in this hotel uh, with this uh, woman uh, who I, it's not, you're not allowed to talk much about that stuff today. I know it's against the rules, but uh, she was um, really a... Um, an outstanding um, woman with a just a lovely figure and she had on a, a terrific uh, outfit that uh, that certainly um, did its best uh, for her figure too and uh, she was showing us around and uh, she says follow me uh, down the hallway and uh, Tom and I are following her and uh, do, 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 do. <laughs> and, uh, and she turns around and she says do you like everything so far? And old TJ, <laughs> yeah, it's just just great. Dude. But he, in one of the hotels, in, um, uh, it was called the uh, the Chase Park Garden or something like that in um, Louisville, Chase Park Plaza. It was the first first hotel that um, that we had um, rented uh, for the um, for the Mac show and. Uh, I may have told you before, when, when, with our first show and so forth, uh, we didn't have much money. Uh, uh, Jack Staley, uh, my original partner, Tom and I, we all, when we started the show, we threw threw in fifteen hundred bucks a piece, and uh, then tried to look for a location. And uh, uh, Ron Wynan recommended the Chase Park Plaza, and sure enough, they had a a, 
a large ballroom and then another ballroom on a lower floor and uh, they agreed to uh, uh, they said if you guys can fill this hotel we'll give you the ballroom it was uh, it was st. Louis not Louisville st. Louis you're right on yeah, yeah. sorry I'm getting old guys <laughs> uh, so um, uh, where was I here uh, so at any rate, they, they agreed to uh, give us the, uh, the two ballrooms if we filled the hotel. So we were, we were there at that place, and, uh, and there was another lovely woman there that was um, in charge of uh, bookings uh, for shows, and um, a real, another real, a real beauty. And, uh, of course, Tom uh, got on very well with her, and uh, uh, she liked him also. Uh, and I guess about the, uh, it was either the second year or the third year that we were there at the Chase Park. Um, Tom and, uh, and this gal, her name was Karen, I believe, she, she uh, they were talking and uh, Karen said, Oh, I'm coming to uh, Washington uh, next month. And uh, Tom, of course, who lived in Fredericksburg, is not far from Washington, he's he said, oh, um, uh, maybe we could get together for lunch. And um, Karen said, oh, that would be an excellent idea. And then I kind of forgot about that. And then we were meeting then later, I guess it was the, the next show, and um, Karen was at the table, and uh, Tink was there, and Jack Staley, and me, and, uh, and Tom, of course, and... Uh, uh, and the first thing uh, Karen says with uh, Tink sitting there, oh, that was such a lovely lunch that I had with you, Tom. I really enjoyed it. And I watched Tink's face, and <laughs> you, you want to see something that was just unbelievable. She says, what? What's this about, Tom? Or Thomas. She always called him Thomas. What's this about, Thomas? And, oh, uh, uh, well, well, it was, it was nothing. Uh, well, why didn't I know about this? And uh, the next thing, you know, Tink gets up from the table and slams the chair and she says, we'll talk about this later and walks off in a huff. Now, I told you, you never see the colonel frazzled, but he was, he was literally shaking in his boots on that one. It was just, uh, uh, you never would think that something like that would happen to him because he was a guy that planned everything. And not that he really did anything wrong, but what he did wrong was he forgot to tell Tink he was having lunch with Karen. So the next day, Staley and I, we said, how'd you make out, Tom? And he's still with his head down and grumbling and uh, obviously not so well. But uh, those are some of the, some of the things that um, uh, can really be hilarious if you're not involved with it. And especially knowing Tom, how he was and all, it was, a, uh, it was fun to see uh, uh, something like that happen to him and see how well he did or didn't handle it, which was not so well. So what are you going to do? Well, anyhow, I, I had a tough week this week. I, um, I've had um, cataracts for years and um, I haven't done anything about it. I keep thinking, ah, they'll poke your eye out or it's going to be painful or whatever. Uh, but um, I saw um, uh, a guy, uh, Gary, uh, what's his last name, Ob, but the, uh, the guy from Chicago? Martin. Gary Martin. I think it was at the Mac show, and he had just had his cataracts removed. And boy, he was going on about how great it was. you got to get it done. And so... I started thinking about it, and uh, I, unfortunately, I mentioned it to Marie, and that was it. The next thing you know, she's making appointments all over the place. So, uh, I, on Monday, uh, I had it done. I was scared to death, uh, but actually, it was not bad at all, not painful, and uh, I can't believe it, guys. I've been looking through the world through a 25 watt light bulb for years and now I got a 100 watt light bulb. The amount I can see is just incredible. I see buildings that are uh, around all around my area that I didn't even know were there. I couldn't drive at night. It was so bad. I thought there was something wrong with my headlights. So if any of you guys, I know some of us are getting up in years if you have cataracts. Uh, I'm going to get the, the, the next one done in my right eye in a couple weeks. but. Uh, get it done. I mean, it's amazing. I, I can read now without glasses. I, I can see the computer. It's, uh, it's just a wonderful thing. 
So sorry to go on. Sorry about that. Uh, and we'll start our um, our unboxing. Well, collectors, you remember on the um, the last unboxing, um, I had opened a package that uh, that had about a dozen pieces of um, Third Reich assorted uh, tableware in it, and um, a couple of pieces at the end. Uh, I think I showed them to you. Uh, they have the um, AH initials on them, uh, and uh, these are. Uh, you're saying, oh, that's not like anything I ever saw with AH initials. Well, I agree, but these are very, very rare. Uh, and these two pieces come from the little tea house that was just down the bend from the Berghof. And Hitler and Ava and other invited guests used to go there in the afternoon. Uh, the place was called the, uh, the Berghof Moose Schlaner Kopf. That's the best I can pronounce it. Moose Schlonerkopf. Um, and in um, uh, the great uh, James Yannis that's done so much for, uh, for our hobby with um, silver pieces, uh, he covers the, uh, the Moose Schlonerkopf um, flatware in his book. And you can see the odd initials that are, that are shown on it. This particular piece is a ladle. And if you look at, uh, at the initials on the flatware, you'll see that they're the same kind of um, uh, unusual design. So it's always great to have um, a book that, uh, that shows something in it. And, um, and normally we can assume that's correct um, because uh, Mr. Yanis has good credentials. But you never know about things like that. And when you can prove something yourself, um, that really makes it a lot of fun and makes it very rewarding. So what I want to show you, um, a couple years ago, I bought this uh, photograph album. And, it's, and it's, a, uh, it's a U.S. album, and it follows a, a soldier's life from before he was in the army, when he got married, in the army, army training, and then um, then off to the war. So I'll just show you a few few photographs so you can get kind of get the idea. Um, these are his pre-war years, different functions and so forth that we see in so many albums that aren't really interesting to us. I know that. Um, this man was also a great letter writer, and the album is filled with, with his letters, as well as captions and dates. And now he's starting to, uh, to get into the, um, the training days in the service, and again, letters home, you know, what, what wonderful things. His service days, and friends in the barracks, and all that stuff, girlfriends and wives, you know, the usual kind of stuff. Uh, a, uh, that's a, a, a menu from some place and more letters home. So you can really get the, the, the whole history of, of this man's life uh, through the photographs and the letters. More letters. And it goes on and on. He's had a drawing of himself. Um, more letters. Here he made Tech Sergeant and he, he put the, uh, the stripes in the album. And now, I don't know whether we're getting overseas yet here or not, but more photos and stuff, and I'll keep going here. And then we'll get further along, and yeah, now we're, now we're overseas, and the, the letters continue. Um, let's see what we got here. The, it's neat how he put stuff in here. There's currency from the time, and... Uh, more letters. Uh, then he's got some coins here. Uh, this looks like a... Um, is that a railway insignia? Ob? Yes. I think it is, yeah. And there's a railway collar tab. Another uh, uh, shoulder board and a Deutsche Wehrmacht um, armband. And uh, more letters, more, more stuff like that. 
Paris suburbs entered, so you can see he was in all of these places. Um, another set of shoulder boards and some cards home or cards that were sent to him. So you really, um, here's Patton's Army, some German stamps and things, and uh, there's virtually a biography of this man's life. Here's some more things here. I'm not sure what, what these are. What does that say, Ab? Can you see what that says? Parachutes. Oh, parachute material. Oh, yeah. yeah, there you go. So that's kind of interesting. And uh, uh, this, I think, is pretty cool. It's a, um, it's a piece of canvas from a B-27. More letters. and So you can see, if you took some time to read all of this stuff, um, you would get a great account of World War II uh, from this man's outlook. Here's some um, NCO insignia and some more here. Uh, Third Army tanks reached the Rhine. See, we're moving along in the war. And then here's a nice, uh, nice banner and a party badge and a, uh, a Luftwaffe artillery arm patch. Isn't that cool the way he did all this? A beautiful... Um, a uh, wool armband in mint condition, uh, more pictures, uh, more insignia, a cap insignia here for, for an, an M43 cap. Aha, uh -huh, meeting the Russians. So, you know, it just, it's just a phenomenal thing. And um, eventually here, we're going to get to Berchtesgaden. Here we are. We're in Berchtesgaden. Uh, that's a picture of the Kelstein house. And there's several photographs taken in Berkeley's garden, but look what's uh, sewn to the album. It's one of these exact setting of flatware that I got last week. Isn't that great? So to me, there's never any question where this came from. You can't get better evidence than this. It just is phenomenal. So um, I'm very pleased, and I'm keeping these things for my personal personal collection. Uh, so anyhow, uh, that's the kind of thing you can, um, there's even an old dollar there, you can get from um, photo albums because um, I think I've said it before, um, uh, pictures don't lie, and um, now there's his dog tags are even here. So this is just a wonderful, wonderful uh, biography of this man's life. Um, his name was, um, let me just put my glasses on to see that. Um, yeah, he was First Sergeant Melvin James Gehacht, G-E-H-A-C-T. So, and the album, it chronicles the U.S., England, France, Germany, and of course includes the um, the little tea house. So I hope you found that of interest. Okay. Well, okay, we're finally getting to the unboxing here, which is I know what you really wanted to see, not and listen to me go on, but but here we go. Let's see what we got in this box. This box is coming from Sweden. Looks like it made it pretty well. The mail did a good job and Oh, it's got a good bag in it. I like this bag. And let's see what this is. Oh, wow, well, yeah, look at this. Yeah. Yeah, collectors, this is, um, of course, a, um, a Red Cross hewer. Um, but it, look at the condition of it. It is just fantastic. Um, I had gotten this a few months ago and uh, uh, somehow it got sold and then I couldn't sleep because I wanted to get it back because I wanted to keep it for my own collection because I've just never seen one better. Look at the condition of the the paint and the uh, the frog and the nickel plating. It just, uh, I know it's only a Red Cross hewer but yeah and look at that, <laughs> that blade is just uh, they just don't get any better than that. So I was lucky I was able to to get this piece back and uh, 
Uh, so now it's um, it's not going anywhere. It's it's going to go into my own collection. Uh, I don't think there's a better one than that. I mean, it just is a just amazing. So I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled with that. That's a great start for me. So that's a good thing. Now let's see what we got in the next box. See if this one's just as easy to open. Yep. Nothing like one of these uh, razor knives. Boy, they really do the job. Now let's see what we got here. Here's a here's a letter. It's addressed to Debbie, so I don't know what that's all about. It looks like we got a, maybe a couple of pieces here on consignment or something. We'll see. Let's see what we got here. Hope they're not too complicated to get open. I think they're SAs by the looks of them, and that's good because we. We just can't keep uh, stock anymore in essays. They're, they're selling so quickly these days. Uh, other dealers have told me the same thing, that uh, that all their essays are gone. And uh, for years we thought, oh, what are we ever going to do with all these essays? I can remember times where I had 250 of them. Well, uh, today you look in my vault and I think there's four or five left. That's it. So, yeah, this looks nice. This is a decent piece. It's a little hit here, but uh, not too bad. Yeah, he's consigning these. Let's see. The reverse is nice, too. It has a WF Grupa on it. And let's see if the blade's nice. Oh, yeah, it's a nice blade, too. So that's, uh, that's not a bad SA at all. Yeah, that looks it looks fine. It's um J. A. Henkels. Oh yeah, it's a nice one. The twins. Do you get that up? That's so that's good. I like that. And let's see what the other one is here. You know, normally you would say, Oh god, not another SA. But uh, any more, I'm, I'm glad to have them because they really are, really are popular. I think one of the reasons, too, is that uh, uh, we've seen tons and tons of new collectors come into the community this year. Uh, and when you're just starting out, uh, you can't afford uh, $20,000 Himmler daggers. And you don't know what the things are anyhow. So the best way to get started... Um, is with the lower priced items because then you can get a feel of what the German quality is, how they were made, and uh, and whether you like them or not. Well, here's another nice piece. Uh, the scabbard's pretty good. It's got a little BB type dent there with nice early hanger and the, the hilt looks good. Another BB hit there, but uh, these are things that happen. A little hit to the grip, but it's not all, not all bad. Let's see, uh, uh, the blade's just a little bit, uh, not much blackening left in the motto, but it's the blade is still nice and bright. Let's see who made this one. Oh, it's an Anton Wingen. Yeah, they were, they were good makers. They made good stuff. So that's a good, uh, that's a good early dagger too. And we're glad to have it. Thank you, sir. We'll be happy to put these up on consignment. And like I say, the way things are going, I don't think that they'll last very long. All right, moving on. Let's see what we got next here. Like I always say, guys, you know, I don't know what's going to be in this stuff either. So we just have to have to open the flaps and, and see what's going to be a sight for our eyes. Hopefully all nice things. Now what is this here? Uh, there's a little letter here. Let's see what this is. Uh, some B 
good bubble paper and oh yeah look at this yeah okay I, I remember the man telling me about this yeah now here's some and again it's in the scabbard backwards I don't know why people do that but they always do it seems like there you have a um, a second model RLB officer's dagger but what's wrong with it do you guys see anything wrong with it it does have aluminum hilt but that's that's something you see on the later pieces yeah of course it has a it has a first model look off a chain on it so uh, it may have been that uh, this RLB guy was um, was too cheap to buy a set of leather hangers or, or uh, maybe uh, at the time he bought the dagger because it would have been a late dagger with these um, aluminum hilt mounts maybe there were no hangers available anymore because there was a shortage of leather so he put these on here it's not a big deal and there, this is a great part too I'm glad to have it so I will I will take this hanger off because it shouldn't really be on the dagger and uh, let's see what the blade looks like yeah it's not too bad it's nice and bright has a couple spots here but I think they'll come mostly out let's see if there's a maker mark no now a couple spots on the back on the same place, but overall, uh, look at the leather. The leather's good, and the um, the enamel is good in the uh, pommel. The leather on the scabbard is perfect, and the the scabbard fittings look dull, but it's mostly just patination. Uh, that'll that'll clean up some if somebody wanted to do it. So. Uh, you know that's not a bad piece and it and it's, it's I don't know maybe I'll leave the hanger on it I don't know I'll see but uh, but that's uh, that's the first time I've ever seen that on an RLB so there you go you you never see everything in this business like I say every day I learn something and I'm and I'm glad to be able to do it too uh, let me light my cigar after that There's probably six guys out there thinking, boy, I wish I could get that uh, Luftwaffe hanger for the dagger I have that has no hanger. Well, we'll see. Mmm. Prost. Okay. Let's go on from here. So far, nothing earth-shaking, but uh, we never know what's in the next box. Let's see what we got here now. This man used two boxes, so he must value what's in here. I hope I valued as valued as much as he does. We shall see. <clears throat> well, looks like we got a letter. Okay, he says these are Third Infantry Division bringbacks. Oh, that sounds interesting. Uh, oh, I see. Oh, wow. Yeah, these are. Yeah, this is. Um, uh, these are some very good things and valuable things too. Um, I'll try to get this package open so you can. So you can see what they are. Um, you're going to say, "Ah, oh, they look like just dishes to me." And yeah, I know, I know what you're thinking. A lot Mice, of them, look, mycin. It's mycin, yeah. Yeah, these are um, these are um, mycin porcelain. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, this is what they call the red dragon pattern, and. Um, these items come back from the Kelstein house. This was the house on top of the mountain over top of the Berghof. Um, they were brought, brought back by this 3rd Infantry Division um, soldier and they have the, uh, the Meissen uh, trademarks on the back of them uh, which will relate to the, uh, to the 1930s. 
So it looks like there's um, there's several um, several plates here, and uh, there's also uh, some cups and some saucers. So these are um, these are very good things that I will um, I will put up for um, probably consignment unless he wants to sell them. If so, I may buy them. I'll see. But um, uh, for you guys that are into uh, mycin, uh, coming from the Kelstein house, it just doesn't get any better. I know there's no swastikas on them. They weren't meant for that. They weren't political. They were just meant to be beautiful dishes, dishes, dishes for the uh, for the party people to enjoy. Okay, that's that box. That's kind of a nice thing. I like that. Now, let's see what we got next here. This is kind of a klutzy looking thing. It's, where is this coming from? Uh, this is coming from Holland. Oh, it's been looking too bad a shape here. Pretty long ride from the Netherlands, so all told it's not bad. All in all, let's see what we got. Uh, go. Oh, another nice letter. Hi Tom. Uh, this is I think something to do with Wilmer. Oh, we got a box inside of a box. Okay. Let's see what we got here. This kind of stuff, yeah. Yeah. All right, you guys might know what this is. That's one of the the Wilner gnomes, and a Wilner knife fit down through his arms, and these were used to display where Wilner was being sold. It's very heavy on a marble base, and uh, see the detail in the face of the gnome and. Uh, I just think these are wonderful. This is about the uh, third or fourth one I've had over the years and uh, I always enjoy them and uh, uh, people that have Wellner silver pieces certainly would want to add something like this to their collection. So that's a great piece and um, I'm happy to have that. Yep. See what you can get from the Netherlands. I know that Wellner also had shops in the Netherlands, so that may well have been in a uh, in a Dutch shop somewhere. So that's pretty cool. Let's see what we got next here. <laughs> that's what we got next. Everything fell down. Well, we'll pick it up later. Hope nothing broke there. Uh, see that's the trouble you know we're down we're down in this little cellar and there's four people working here and it's uh, it's stuffed with all kinds of stuff and uh, we try to put the real valuable things inside of our vault and then I have a couple other little safes that I use to put put things in uh, but there's there's just never never really enough room um, here, but uh, we do the best we can. There's not much we can do about it. I can figure out how this box is uh, is sealed here. It's pretty lightweight, so whatever's in it doesn't uh, have much uh, heft to it. Now uh, let's see. Some packing paper. And, you know, let's see what we got here. All right. Uh, wow, there's a good thing. Yeah, that looks original too to me. That's a uh, an SS man's belt. Uh, it's marked with the uh, the size in the leather, and uh, the belt itself looks in beautiful condition. Uh, I don't know whether the belt is marked. It's hard to tell with the uh, the leather still in it. But let's see if there's any other marks on the. Uh, no, I don't see, I don't see anything else, but it looks all, 
original to each other and uh, that's kind of a nice uh, kind of a nice thing I like that you guys like that yeah who wouldn't want a nice SS belt and buckle Let's see, uh, must be more in here well, there's some kind of a looks like a peaked cap here let's see what this is Oh wow! <laughs> oh, Look at that. That's a beautiful um, uh, rural police uh, officer's peaked cap. And look at the condition of the brim. You know that uh, uh, that patent leather uh, hardly shows any age at all with the large police um, eagle and the cockade, the officer's cords. And oh wow, yeah. Look at the inside too, collectors. Isn't that a nice example? The, the celluloid is still there and the maker mark. Um, that's a, um, a first-class uh, officer's cap. I know there were a lot of policemen in Germany and uh, we certainly see our share of police bayonets, but um, uh, caps like that we don't seem to see too often. Well, also it's an officer, so that makes a difference. There's no mothing in it either. Boy, that uh, that is really uh, that's really nice. Uh, I'm glad to have that. You like that, collectors? I think that's a pretty good thing. Have to have a drink to that one. Hmm. Yeah. Now let's see what else is in this box. So far, so good in this box. Oh, here we go. Yeah, here we go. There's some stuff. We love armbands. Armbands are so difficult to keep in stock. Isn't that right, Ob? We put them up and they're all gone in a day or two. <clears throat> especially so, SS. Especially SS, yeah. This is one of the... Um, uh, the cotton type SS you don't see too often, but it's all separate construction with a separate field and a separate um, uh, swastika. Uh, nothing inside. It shows some usage and all, but hey, that's real. Oh, here's one you don't see. Uh, that's a, a DAF, isn't it, Ob? Mm -hmm. With the cog wheel. Um, I don't ever remember having one of those. You seen one of those? Yeah, I'll have to take a longer look at that one. I've never seen that uh, before. It's all printed. Shows some age and usage sewn up the back, but uh, that's pretty neat. Ah, here's a railway, a Reichsbahn armband. Uh, this was part of the Railway Protection Group, and it looks like it's got a rubber stamp on it too. Uh, this is all nicely done. It's um, it's Bevo woven in there. It's not printed, so that makes it nice too. Uh, you can probably see that weaving on the back. Yeah, see how that all looks. So that's a that's a nice thing. This is a good um, this is a good armband. They're tough to find. And then this is a um, a political leader. It uh, it's not mint. It's got a got a little couple stains here. Um, there's no holes; they're just stains, so it's uh, it's not too bad with the with the brocade oak leaves and the white. Uh, that would indicate that um, he was a Christlighter. A Christlighter was a, a political leader in a city, as opposed to a town, which is an Orps Group lighter. So. Uh, Oh yeah, here you go inside too. This is always interesting that uh, you guys might not know this, but a lot of political leaders' armbands have an arrow inside, the arrow pointing up, Aber, this, this direction, upward. And the reason for that is that if you were putting this on, how would you know which direction those leaves are supposed to be? They would kind of look the same either way. Uh, so I guess they wanted to make sure that uh, that their proud party leaders weren't wearing their armbands upside down. The leaves always point up. That's how they you know. do. Yeah, that's right. So 
So that's a good thing. I'm happy with those. They're all nice. And that PAF is interesting. I've never seen it before. I'll have to look, look that one up. I'm sure it's original, but I think it's kind of a rare armband. Let's see if there's anything else in this in this box here. No, just a bill. <laughs> just a bill. So, okay, well, that's great. I'm glad to get those things. They're all good things that are very saleable, and I'm sure some collectors will want. I like this belt, too. got one more big box here. This baby looks like it's really been through the mill. Man, uh, uh, the post office, uh, uh, the guy at the post office, his, his name is Dave, and uh, he brought this out to me yesterday, and and he says, I know, I know, the box is all, and he says, don't get don't get mad at me, I'm just the messenger. I said, I'm not mad at you, Dave. I'm sure everything will be fine. I hope. Well, we'll see what's in here. It kind of looks like the box came open and the post office wrapped this uh, saran wrap around it to keep it shut because I can't imagine somebody acted that way. This is why I always tell people to, to make sure that you you pack things well because you know when these things are thrown into the trucks in and out and uh, it may happen four or five times and then into a warehouse and um, uh, especially with things that are heavy with things that are heavy when you're when you're only dealing with a cardboard box you know that you got to pack the things well well let's hope that everything Everything survived all right. That's all we can do is hope. Wow, he didn't do much in here either. He just threw the, he just threw a bunch of bags in here and, uh, and, uh, and uh, oh, that's uh, just a piece of, that's his whole packing. This, that was it. The rest is just bagging. See, that's not a, it's not a good way to do things, but. Well, let's see what we got here. At least they're all in bags. I like the bags. That's a pretty old bag. I'm not talking about ladies here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's a pretty old bag. That's a terrible thing to say. Oh, wait a minute. Um, my attitude is changing here uh, very quickly. Ah, yes. Well, here we have a, um, a chained SS dagger with a type 1 chain on it. You know, the kind where you can see through the clover leaf. And um, uh, th these chains are always plated. Uh, the cross guards are nickel on this because it's an earlier dagger. And the, um, the scabbard paint, that shows a little rippling there and um, some usage, but. Um, the grip is still in perfect condition. Look at that grip with a nice uh, nickel eagle. Let's see uh, what the blade looks like. Um, that's not too bad. Uh, no spots on it. It may just need to be wiped off a little bit. Because, yeah, I think the blade is fine. Yeah, see that? It's bright underneath that. It's just some old, uh, old oil or something on there. So that's okay. We're glad to have it. Uh, uh, can't seem to keep chained SS's in stock either. Uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, let's, there's, there's more here though, guys. Let's see what else is here. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. All right, guys, here's something you don't see. That is a Alcozo Diplomatics dagger. 
not a government official, a diplomatic. See how the heads go the opposite direction? And I can tell by the scabbard uh, eyelets that it's going to be an Alcozo. Let's see how it looks on the other side. Yeah, the scabbard is fine. The hilt is all just perfect here. Wow, look at the top. Doesn't even look like it's ever been opened. See those spanner holes? Yeah, this is a this is a high quality uh, high quality piece here. Yeah, and the blade is perfect. It's got grease on it, and and, I, and it is an Alcozo. Yeah, this is this is a um, uh, this is a real high quality piece here. Very very nice. Put it down. Can you get through that grease? Yeah, it's Alcozo all the way. Um, absolutely in, um, in mint, really just about mint condition. Just a little bit of wear on the on the high points of the eagle, and yeah, that spanner is, looks pretty good there. So that's a good thing. Wow, boy, I'm glad we got to this box. Ooh. Well, let's see what else is here. Moving right along. Whew. Not one, but two. Wow. That's a nice one. That's a first type chain also. It's got an anodized scabbard and a lot of the lacquer is still on the scabbard. See that lacquer there and the anodizing still looks like it's perfect see what the other side looks like yeah the anodizing is all there nickel fittings Wow nickel eagle yeah this looks like a very decent dagger yeah the blade is a nice on it too just needs to be wiped off a little bit yeah yeah this is a um, this is a first-rate, uh, see if it's unmarked, yeah. Yeah, see that blade, you're looking at nothing there. That blade is mint, it's just um, uh, old uh, grease or whatever is on it. It'll wipe right off. So that's a, uh, that's a hell of a nice, um, that's a hell of a nice SS chain dagger. Really, really nice, beautiful. I like that a lot. Yep. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what's next. Oh, there's quite a few things in here. Valuable things too. It's amazing to me that it wasn't better uh, packaged. Well, some people you think, you know, you boy, you know, you guys, you've seen how some of these uh, these bayonets are so wrapped up that it takes an hour to, and it's and it's a hundred dollar bayonet. Uh, these things were just kind of thrown in there, but oh boy, what do we got here? Wow, this looks nice. Oh uh, yes, this is the um, the deluxe Icorn uh, hunting cutlass. This was the uh, best one you could buy from Icorn. Um, they're shorter than the other type. Um, these were most likely owned by officers. All silvered fittings, um, beautiful stag grip. Uh, the um, lower mount is really nice with the engraving of the, the stag and they're bellowing. I think he's looking for a doe is what he's looking for, but, and I don't mean money. And let's see what the back of it looks like. Yeah, the back is nice too. The leather is is just perfect and let's hope it has a nice blade yeah yeah it does it's got the hunting scenes just what you want to see really really nice yeah it's a nice nice thing and let's see if we got a we got the oak leaves on the uh, the spine 
and then on the reverse, yep, that's what we want to see, the stamped Icorn trademark. I've told you guys before, when you see an etched mark like that on these kind of daggers, uh, they're normally no good, so you've got to really be careful. Uh, this is a 100% and a very, very fine piece. Um, very difficult to uh, to acquire and um, unfortunately not, not cheap either. Uh, but wow, that's a nice dagger. I like that. Uh, <laughs> this box has some, some good stuff in it. Mm -mm. That's some good stuff too. Mm. Well, let's see, we got any more? We got something here, I don't know. Well, let me, let me just get this. There's one more. Oh no, there's still two more daggers. No, there's a lot of stuff here yet. Can you believe that? Oh. God, there's thousands and thousands of dollars here. And he just, man, I wonder if we even insured this thing. I wonder if it didn't. Oh, I can't tell. I have to look at the bottom of it, but. Boy, it's amazing uh, what collectors do. Oh, wow, this thing's... <laughs> wow. Well, this is um, uh, what they call the um, uh, railway water protection, where it's identical to a railway piece uh, a Bonschutz, except that the cross guard is the same as an army cross guard. And I'm, I'm just looking at this cross guard, and it's a Horster cross guard. And uh, the scabbard is, is, a, is a Horster by the looks of the, um, the screws are Horster type screws. Yeah, and there we go, the trademark is Horster 2. Normally you'll see these in Icorn, uh, but I'll show you a letter that I have from the Horster factory uh, where someone is ordering Van Schutt staggers from Horster. So we know that they made them. So this is a uh, not only a really, really rare dagger, but also a very rare maker for them too. And the grip looks in perfect condition. Uh, wow, this, uh, stuff like this is just... This is stuff you don't see, collectors. This is really a, a very, very rare dagger. <laughs> and there's, there's still more in here. Wow. Amazing, just thrown into a box. This is the whole packing. Where was that? Big? There, this is, that's the whole packing. <clears throat> I hope he, uh, I hope he sent an inventory list. I hope nothing's missing. Yeah, I'll have to look and see. Well, let's see. Oh, yeah. there was another dagger in, in this. Your in buddy this Dave too. from the post office will be coming over here next week. Yeah. <laughs> Here's another piece here. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> wow. Oh, you guys ready for this? Holy cow. My God, is that cool. Look at that, it's an honor, honor bayonet with a, uh, uh, with an applied skull on the grip. Unbelievable. Wow, is that cool. Oh, see the honor uh, oak leaves and all etched into it. And same on the reverse. And it's in a standard scabbard, and this is incredible. Look at that grip. Isn't that unbelievable? Oh, that skull, wow, do I love that. And the honor motif also, wow. Is the top decorated too? Yeah. Of, course. Yeah, of course, of course. And it's got green felt in it too. Wow, oh, this is one of the coolest man that's ever. Oh no. Oh. oh, it just it just keeps going on and on and on and on and on. Oh my god, look at this thing. Oh. Oh. Look at some it's a um 
uh, Infantry Regiment 92, um, something uh, 1929, 1930, 1931, 19. It must be a, an award that was given uh, for winning some type of a contest. I'll have to study all this. Wow. Oh my God, that's tremendous. Have you guys ever seen anything like that in your life? Let's see if there's anything on the reverse of the blade. Yeah, more, more years of winning. Wow. This, this is a, uh, just an astounding piece. That's one of the neatest Third Reich edge weapons I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot of them. Wow. If you guys don't like that, <laughs> you, don't, you don't like collecting. I mean, that's that's just, as, just as great as it comes. And the skull and all, I'll have to see if I can figure the significance of that when I translate the blade and all, but... Wow. Wow, 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 wow. And still, that was the, uh, oh, my goodness. Uh, there's one more thing in here. I wonder what the heck this is. After looking at all this wonderful stuff, I... <laughs> I can't imagine this isn't wonderful too, but let's see what, did I get everything? I don't know, there's still, still one more dagger. Oh, I didn't get them all yet. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Oh my God. Look at this. Oh, wow. That is a first model RLB officer. That is one of the rarest of all the daggers. Look at the condition of it. The leather is fabulous. It's just incredible. Let's see if the reverse is just as nice. Now there's one little hit here, but it's not bad. And just having the hanger still on it too is a, a tremendous thing. It's either going to be an Alcozo or a Wiresburg. Let's see what it is. It's a Wiresburg. Good blade. Yeah. Just got a lot of grease on it, but I'm sure it's a mint blade. You get that trademark, Ob. Yeah. Wow, that's a that's a premier um, premier dagger too. <laughs> this is this is this whole this whole thing is an advanced collection in itself, isn't it, Ob? Oh, absolutely. Man, there's some stuff here. Good luck finding that stuff. Right, let me see what else is it. Yeah, good luck finding that stuff today. Let me see what else is here. What is this? Feels like a gorget. Oh, I can't believe this. I can't believe it. Oh my God. Uh, are you kidding me? Oh boy. Oh my God. Tilt it up a little bit. Oh, look at this. This is an original. Look at the neck chains, how beautiful they are. Oh, well, I'm glad he packed all this stuff up nice and tight. Yeah, me too. But it made the ride somehow. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the most valuable gorgets there are. There's so few originals of these. They were, they were first made in 1938. Um, but I guess for marching around was only 1939, and then the war started, so they didn't didn't make very many of them. Unbelievable. Let's see what the back looks like. Yeah, that's in good shape too with the green felt. Wow. That RCM. Is there an Oh yeah, there's an R look at that. There's an RZM mark on it too. No, this is absolutely 100 percent And this is how they made the originals too with this little wire that is attached to the uh, to the lower lower link. Man, oh man. 
Oh, the, the, and the chains have the the details on both sides. I sort of knew that, but I forgot. Wow. Well, this is something that uh, you'll never you'll never see. Um, you know how many of these I've had in almost 50 years. This is the second one. That's a fact. That's how rare they are. My goodness. <laughs> I just don't even know what to say. Um, it's a good box, Dad. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> box. But I mean, uh, I, I really, I, I just want to see if he even insured this thing. I'll bet he didn't. Uh, it's, I don't know, I can't even tell. It was so ripped apart in the post office and so it must have came apart, so some of the things must have came out and the post office put them in again and put that uh, wrapper on. Thank God for uh, some honest people. But anyhow, collectors, uh, uh, we've opened some, some pretty cool things during these uh, unboxings, but uh, I've got to tell you, as a, as a grouping, um, boy, this is... Uh, I mean, it's it's heart stopping almost. It's just amazing, amazing things. Wow. Did you like looking at that, guys? I'm going to enjoy looking at it. I'll tell you. For I'll be looking at that stuff for the next two weeks. It's so beautiful, especially this thing, man, <laughs> and the Gorget too. I mean, God, and the Diplo, and the Railway, and they're all. Uh, when I first, the first example was the chained SS with the little kink in the scabbard and I thought, ah, I guess the stuff's all going to be kind of mediocre. Uh, but, wow, that's certainly not the case. Uh, that, that, was, that was really something that, uh, unexpected there at the end. Um, uh, so we never know. And... Um, um, you want to talk about this picture a little bit? Uh, it's, uh, I kind of like it. It's um, obviously it's uh, it's showing a sailor who's been shipwrecked in a in a battle. He's waving the imperial flag. I think the painting is called the Last Survivor, uh, and the painting depicts um, the Battle of um, Skakarak, which you collectors may know better as. Uh, Jutland or Jutland, as the Germans would say. Um, I think it's a, a really neat uh, painting. It comes from 1916. Um, probably could use some cleaning, but then again, I kind of like all the old age on it, and uh, I think it might look nice with my uh, my naval collection. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I I just bought it, so I've only got I only had a a few days to uh, ponder what to do with it. So there we are and uh, uh, that'll conclude our boxing, unboxing. What number is it, Ob? 2-1. 21. Wow, we've done a lot of these. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying them and um, take care of yourselves and uh, we'll see you next time and remember the SOS is coming up soon in February so you don't want to miss that show. I'll see everybody there.